In the United States, it is commonplace to overuse energy. Daily, we commute using machines that weigh 10 to 20 times more than we do. The way we exploit energy is hurting our earth and our health. Some argue it is habit. We were raised this way. It is far more convenient. However, at Redmond High School, a small group of students under the direction of Mr. Town are trying to change this. Together, we tried to answer these questions. How can we reduce and reuse energy to combat global climate change? Also, how can we let others know of our ideas and actions? We decided it would have to start here at our very own Redmond High School. to figure out the feasibility of um, ex either expanding our existing solar systems or using the money that we have from contests to put up a windmill instead. To find the best site for a wind turbine, we took measurements from six different areas around the school. Uh, so this is uh, a screen that's hooked up to our weather station up on the roof. Doubling our photovoltaic system would save about 1,500 additional pounds of CO2 per year. The type of windmill we've chosen to apply for, if granted, will save another 1,500 pounds of CO2 annually. We're looking at a 1.8 kilowatt Skystream turbine manufactured by Southwest Wind Power. We estimate the annual production at 40 to 50 feet above ground to be 5,000 kilowatt hours. So uh, we've discovered that the most economical option for us is to expand the current photovoltaic array that we have out there. The goal of this project was to reduce the electricity used by lighting in and around Redmond High, resulting in money saved and carbon dioxide emissions reduced. Using these measurements in the cafeteria and adjacent wings, we turn off lights before school when light is streaming in and more after lunch hour. Uh, the light panel that controls all the lighting in the cafeteria on sunny days, we just flip them off, you know, it's a simple process, but it saves a lot of carbon dioxide being emitted, so just... Off go some lights. Just, just all that. Turning off lights will have saved the school $211 by the end of the 2008-2009 school year. Also, 2,791 pounds of carbon dioxide will be prevented from entering the atmosphere. I estimated that about 500 cars drive to and from our school every day. We went about trying to reduce that number. To encourage students to ride the bus, we'll set up an incentive system. So each time a student rides the bus, they'll get a raffle ticket. And at the end of the week, they can turn their raffle tickets into the box, and we'll draw five names out of the box, and each winner will receive a gift card to places like REI or the movie theater. Our plan was successful because the average number of students who rode the bus from Monday to Friday was increased by 25. In our carpool program, we went to every single teacher individually and asked them if they could carpool with other fellow teachers. Teachers have saved 15,377 pounds of carbon dioxide, 701 gallons of gas, and 389 car trips. Every week, students go to designated classrooms and pick up recycling. Our goal is to reduce 17 tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere by recycling over 9,000 pounds of paper. To let students know about our drive, we put posters like these around the school. Based on current trends, we were easily able to reach our goal for the 2008-2009 school year by recycling over 9,715 pounds, which equals over 17 tons of carbon dioxide. We hope to divert 30 pounds of compost and recycling from the trash every day. On average, we collect about 37.4 pounds of compost every day and about 14.5 pounds of recycling every day at lunch. 